today is gonna be cool. All right, uh, I think it's gonna be fun. Um, so last time, last last class was a little bit of a sort of we had to do it. wasn't necessarily as fun to talk about the transversality condition, but um, we got it out of the way. Uh, so, you know, we, and, and I mean, it's, it's technical, it's like kind of important, but frankly, we usually just kind of forget about it. Okay. So, but it's one of those things that you have to, you have to go over. Okay. For, for sort of completeness. Okay. Um, but now we're going to, we're going to go back to these, these graphs. Okay. So let me, uh, uh, where are we at? That's what we want. Okay. So, um, we're gonna go back to these, I guess, phase diagrams. Okay, so this is what we call a phase diagram uh, because it shows you where you are in phase space. Okay, and so, um, yeah, and so, and, and really, I mean, it, it's it's like it's not. So the reason I'm saying like phase space is, I don't know, that's just what people use. I think it probably comes from physics. Again, a lot of stuff, some terminology comes from physics. In this case, the phase would be like what the offset inside of a sine wave. So if you have a pendulum it's like where in the motion is it okay so um here it's not exactly that uh so our state space rate right, would be capital okay and then i guess what we would call our phase space in this case for whatever reason is is capital and consumption okay but the key is that consumption isn't really a state space you can if you want you could move consumption around just continuously like like wild uh, all the time, it's just that usually people's utility functions do not lead them to do that. Okay, you could have a utility function where you have a, you value switching things up a lot. You know, you get easily bored, you're restless. Maybe that would cause you to induce some fluctuations in your consumption for no other reason than just for kicks. Um, but we actually generally have the opposite here because people want a consumption smooth. You have concave utility. Okay, so not to say it couldn't happen, doesn't happen, but that's like the baseline assumption. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, so this is this is the graph that I'm 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 gonna start off. With. I'll probably start a new one too, um, but but you can see you know the the important things are we have K and C, we have these um, null clines, I guess you might call them, where it's a point where you're not moving around either in K or C. Okay, so the red line is where you're not moving around in K, which is uh, the horizontal x-axis dimension. So the red and, and the rule that implies is that you always have to cross the red line vertically as you're moving through this space. Okay, and then the the green line is just the opposite. It's where c dot is zero. So that means you're not moving around in the vertical y dimension uh, or c dimension, and that means you have to cross horizontally whenever you cross that. Okay, so as you long as long as you say and say, well, I know I'm starting. I know like the cardinal direction kind of that I need to be moving in that quadrant, right? So we, we broke it up into these four quadrants and we figured out where you should be moving in each of those and it was unambiguous. And so you kind of know where you're going, you know you need to like cross these these uh, null clines either vertically or horizontally and then everything else is just kind of sort of, and so that's the qualitative sort of rules and then you just sort of interpolate, right? So, um, Okay, and that, that's what we did. We checked out these various paths and saw that you can you can only basically, um, you know, uh, there's only one sort of path that leads to steady state because of that instability, which we'll discuss more in, in mathematically uh, or algebraically in a bit. Um, so it's, it's a, because of that instability, you have to you have to hit it exactly, and it's very difficult to hit it exactly in some sense. But people manage if they're hyper rational agents. Okay, so. Um, let me pull up the slides. I switched the slides over to dark mode too, because I thought the notes were dark mode. So why not do the slides? Uh, if something, but you know, sometimes it's like I change the background, but then the text is so black and so you can't see anything. I tried to eliminate all that, but if there's some weirdness, let me know. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just. Uh, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah. So here's 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 okay. The next step is okay. We just we described the basic like, okay, equilibrium setup, okay? And now we can step into doing comparative statics. All right, we can say, what if something changes, okay? So some comparative statics are quite easy, all right? Um, like changing where you are in the state space, okay? We'll do taxes in a bit. Um, let me, okay, there we go, that's what I wanted. All right, so uh, if you change where you are in the state space, okay, let's say you, you had started at some K0, you converged to steady state, everything's happy, um, and then there's a shock and maybe it's an earthquake and a bunch of capital gets destroyed, okay? Um, 
uh, or like obviously earthquakes are also deadly, but in this case we don't really have the notion of that, so we're just going to go with capital. Um, and so let's say that's going to kick you down uh, to to a lower level of capital, okay? But then what happens after that is relatively simple. It's as, as if you had started with that K zero, right? So we already know the script. And and the one the one thing I will note is that there's a there's sort of a recursive notion built into this uh, this line here. This okay, this stable arm, this thing that leads to steady state. I'm going to call that the stable arm. Okay, that's like the one path that you're going to choose to get to steady state. Um, yeah, so there's a recursive notion to this in the sense of if you start at K zero and you follow that path up to oh wait I'm pointing at I'm pointing at the wrong thing if you start at k zero and you follow that path up to here say some intermediate k then if you had started at that k in some other universe what you go what you do going forward is exactly the same right so there's no history dependence here all that matters is which k you started with okay so that that's why there's this this recursive notion built into the stable arm okay it's not like you do this thing, and that, but if you had started here later on, you would have done something else. It's like it's like a time consistency thing, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, so that's important, and that that's that's what gives you that if you if you have a shock to capital to your state, you're going to go back and just do whatever the stable arm tells you to do at that point in in the state space. Okay, so those are easy shocks because it's just like solving the model with a different k zero. All right. Um, there's okay. So then there's other types of sh there, you know there, there's. A million different things, not a million, but there's a couple different things and ways you can shock the system. You can shock different parameters. You can do it permanently. You can do it temporarily. You can say, I'm going to do this in a year. You can say, I'm going to do a temporary shock in a year. Like, there's a million different combinations. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of those, but I'll give you kind of the, the basic lay of the land. Okay, so the first shock you might think about entertaining is a productivity shock, okay, because that's kind of what we do in the Stochastic, aggregate stochastic setting, okay? Um, so here, we're, we're not gonna do a true, we're not gonna do like random unanticipated shocks or anything like that. Well, it's gonna be unanticipated. That's another thing is, do you, do you see it coming? Okay, so it's a little easier for now if we do unanticipated. So it's just like, you're going along, you thought you had a Z, and then boom, it changes. Maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down. Okay, so um, going up, I think it's natural to some big discovery, say, uh, technological um, improvement, um, that makes things better, okay, uh, more productive. Um, and here, okay, so it, yeah, so when I'm saying Z, I think I, sometimes I use A, right, so technology, the, the, the technology TFP-ish parameter, okay? So, um, yeah, so you can imagine going up, going down, you know, that, that's also, of course, possible. I mean, I think COVID is a pretty good example of that. Things happen, right? Um, Okay, so then, and the, but of course, hopefully that's that's more temporary. All right, so so but let's think about a permanent change for now. Okay, um, if if you have a permanent change, okay, I'm gonna start a new diagram. If I try adding lines to that one, things are not gonna be pretty. All right, so this was all that transversality business. Done with that. Okay, new page. All right, so um, yeah, so this is like. shock Z shock you know what I don't want the thick line I want the thin line um, have you guys ever read the book World War Z no uh, yeah, it's about like a zombie apocalypse sort of thing it's it's pretty silly but it's actually kind of interesting but they have a notion of Z shock which is the sort of like people that have been exposed to the zombies it's not like if you are a zombie but it's like you're kind of you're kind of you're, it's, I guess it would be like a PTSD sort of thing, but from like zombies. Okay, so um, that's what I think of when I think of Z shock. But we're thinking about a technological shock. All right, so um, I don't know. Is it going to go up or down? I th it's going to go down because it's just easier for me to draw it that way. Um, so we're going to attempt to redraw this space. Okay, so what the, the critical elements are... Um, we need, I forget which way I drew it, but you know, we need our capital line. Okay, and then we're not, I'm not gonna draw the whole thing. All right, and then we need some consumption line. Okay, so this is, remember, this is k dot equals zero. Is that right? Yeah, and then c dot equals zero. Okay, so um, yeah, and then we have some intersection where those both hold. That's our steady state, okay? 
Um, and then I guess I'll draw, I'll draw the stable arm. Okay. Stable arm usually looks something like that. All right. It's not exactly linear, but it's not too far off of linear actually. Um, I don't. There's no. The stable arm can be convex, kind of cave. Um, it should be like relatively well behaved, but we don't have any strong uh, results about that. Okay. So. Um, all right, now, okay, so this is where we are. This is like, if we were in steady state, it doesn't really matter where our K0 was, could even be at steady state by chance. Um, so now if we sh if we have a shock, okay, I guess we need to also, oh dear, that's the undergrad class, we don't want that. Um, okay, so we have a shock. I guess we need. We should also write down uh, our equations that we're, we're operating with here. Okay, so we're gonna have F prime of K what are our equations? Minus uh, delta, no, not delta, rho. What is our equation here? It's going to be, in this case, okay, so minus delta minus rho, I guess. All right. Let's say it's that, okay? Um, yeah, that's right. And then uh, k dot, okay is going to be f of k minus uh, delta plus n times k minus c. All right. So um, the first equation is, is uh, it controls where we move in c space. That's our Euler equation. It's more of an incentive style equation. OK. Uh, the second equation, I mean, the second equation is really just a, a, a physical accounting equation. It's saying you have some production, you have some depreciation, the N is because of the normalization, and then you have some consumption, everything else left over is investment. Okay, so that's kind of like, it come, like we, we, we get it from the optimization sort of, and we substitute K for A, but really you could derive that from just thinking about the physical structure of the problem. Okay, so, it, and that can be a good check to see if, if you did it correctly, is it doesn't obey what you would, so just ex ante think about the evolution of capital, okay? Um, this one is where the incentives come in. The, the oil equations where the, the real incentives operate. All right. So, but, but so like, but like an income effect might operate here through this, but then like a, a price effect would operate through here. Okay. That's, that's another way to think about it through, sorry, price effect would operate through here. Income effect would operate through like output channels. Okay. So, um, all right. So in this case, if we shock productivity Z, okay. So where is Z? Well, it's actually hiding inside of F. So Z would be a, a linear term, say in front of F. So let's say, um, let's say we're in the world where, where our production function looks like this. Okay. So it's just some Z on, front, on the front of F. Okay. So, um, yeah, you know, if you shock Z, then this F is going to go down. This F is also going to go down because F prime of K is just, uh, alpha Z. Okay. Yeah, minus one. So, so it doesn't matter that F prime is decreasing. Um, it, the Z is still just a linear coefficient on the front. Okay. So. Those are both going to go down, all right. Um, in terms of like the immediate effect, right? So like it's kind of like if this if we were in steady state and this c dot was zero, and all of a sudden f prime drops, then it's going to be negative, you know, on impact. So when I say on impact, I mean when the change happens, but before there's any response. Okay, so. Um, that's that that would be a negative and then here if, if this k dot were zero sorry this k dot were zero f jumps down k dot's going to be negative on impact okay so we're, we're going to expect to be moving down for the negative productivity shock which is not you know that's super surprising all right um okay now but now we also need to think about these um null clients okay so where are they moving that's actually going to be in some sense more important okay so uh yeah, so you know, c dot equals zero. That null Klein. Okay, so that's um, f prime of k. I guess I let me throw z in there so we can actually think about it a little bit more. Um, is going to be equal to delta plus rho. That k dot equals zero null Klein is just saying that c is equal to f of k minus delta plus n. Okay. All right. So we can analyze where these lines are moving. Okay, so now remember, and, and I guess I should write also here, f of kz. All right, so we're gonna analyze where these lines are moving. Um, okay, so let's do k dot equals zero first, because that's easier. 
it's saying c is equal to some concave function of k. Z goes down. We have less output. This thing is just going to, you know, be lower uniformly. Okay. At zero, it's still zero. Okay. But it's going to, and it's going to be lower. If you extrapolate this all the way out, that intersection point is going to be closer in. Okay. Um, so that, that whole curve is going to shift down. Okay. So I guess I am all, I'm just going to also rate that uh, as something like that. All right. So maybe that's a pretty big shock. I don't know. Uh, but it's going to shift down with, with the caveat that it's it's still going to be equal to zero because it's equal to zero. All right. Okay. So then that's good. Um, and then the other thing is that C null Klein. All right. So there, what's going to happen? Okay. So we can we could plug in and solve and and just look at it like that. Uh, or you could say, well, if Z goes down, this F prime term here is going to go down. All right. To restore equality, we would have to increase the f prime term, but because f prime is decreasing, then we're going to decrease k. So we decrease k to increase the marginal product, so that this is restored to an, a, an equality. Um, so that that k is going to go down. That that steady state k is going to go down. All right. Intuitively, okay, your your productivity goes down. Your steady state capital level is going to go down. Right. So it's not surprising. Okay. Um, Let's draw that right here. Okay, so that's that's what we got. This is moving down. This is moving down. All right. Um, things are not good. All right. Um, okay, and then from here, it's just analyzing the equilibrium. So, okay, it's a bit unfortunate that I drew it like this because I actually don't think it has to be true that the new intersection has to be on the the uh, st the stable arm. There's a different stable arm. Okay, and it could be different. All right, it could be like, it probably wouldn't be like this, but let's say maybe it was like that. All right, there, there's nothing proving relationships necessarily between these stable arms. Okay, um, I think no, there's nothing. So so they, they, there's some you know things are forward looking. It's complicated, you know. Uh, so there's nothing saying that if we shift down that we're going to end up on the stable arm. Okay, so these could these could look different. All right, um, yeah. So that's. It's actually kind of a boring example in some sense. It's just, you know, productivity goes down, consumption and capital go down. And um, and ha and then the next thing is, okay, well, that was the steady state. What about the dynamics? Okay, so now with the dynamics, you need to think about, you know, the world shifts underneath you, right? And what that, that, that there's this reduction in, tech, in uh, productivity. Okay, what, ha what happens? Um, your capital is a, is a, uh, a long-running variable. It, in, in the short run, it doesn't change at all, right? So when the productivity goes down, that's like your new K0. And actually, if you think about it, you have that K0, which is the old steady state. And everything forward is just regular solving the problem, as if you had started with K0 is that was that original steady state. Okay, so you're going to start here. Let, remember, so let's say this is that new stable arm. You jump up uh, and then converge down along the new stable arm, right? So you take your old uh, steady state capital as your new K0 and use the lo the lines, which is like the stable arm basically associated with the new dynamics, okay? So that's, that's what you think about it. The, the rules of the game are the dynamics, okay? Um, you might inherit the state uh, from the old rules, but the, the old rules are, are gone, okay? So, um, Now, okay, now I'm trying to think, like, because, you know, I, I said that there's nothing there's nothing showing, like, the relationship between these um, uh, stable arms. Okay, so I guess that means that there's, it's hard to, to really say anything about um, that initial consumption jump. Okay, which is kind of surprising, I guess. Um, So, so I could have drawn that new stable arm differently. I could have drawn it, in fact, so that it passed, if you can see it, underneath here. Yeah. So if, if, we, if we could order the stable arms, then we, would, we could say something about the jumps. And I guess, so, so what, what happens in the way, the way I drew it originally is uh, you have that negative productivity shock. Um, you're, you're anticipating converging to a lower level of capital. Um, and so I guess you just consume more, invest less, and, and go down. The alternative would be you, you consume 
less, but because you're actually producing less too, you're still depleting that capital level. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, I, I, initially I might've thought that you would actually decrease consumption, but if, you know, if you're saying, okay, well, productivity is worse, we're gonna, we're gonna reduce the scale of our, our capital investments and, and level, um, then we're gonna have to reduce capital, may as well enjoy a little bit of a consumption surplus in the short run. Okay, so I think you could kind of argue either way, and and it's and from this alone, we're not going to get it. Now, for you know this particular f of k, um, it may be that in fact there is an unambiguous answer for this. Okay, so uh, I haven't. We could. Let me think. Actually. I guess, no, okay. So you remember I said before, from this equation, I, I talked about that on impact effect. So that doesn't mean where we jump though, okay? What that means is the direction of the arrows, okay? That means the arrows are gonna be pointing down, right? So here you see at this point, the C dot arrow is pointing down. It's saying we're gonna be going downwards in that C space. That's what I, you know, you were, we had a, an equality here at the original steady state. I'm pointing at my iPad, which doesn't make any sense. We had an equality here. Okay, there we go. Um, we had an equality here for the original steady state. Uh, and then that Z goes down, so the Z is in here. All right. And so this is going to go down. So that C dot is negative. Okay, but that doesn't mean that's your jump. These are more flowing in this space. Okay, that's going to tell you where these arrows are pointing. But the jump, the, the problem is that because this was unanticipated, you, you sort of re-optimize. Okay, so you say, what's my new C0 given we have this lower level of productivity that changes my present value of consumption, your present value budget constraint, all that stuff, you recalculate, all right? Um, and then it tells you that your C that's going to be negative. Okay, but that C0, really it comes from you know, remember we plugged in for the present value budget constraint, all that stuff, it comes from that, okay, which that's a separate jump, okay, from, from the calculation of thinking about the on impact direction here, okay? So that's, that's a little confusing. Now, and so anytime something unexpected happens, you're allowed to jump and see basically. And when I say allowed, I mean, it's, it's, it's optimal too, all right? You're always allowed to jump and see, but it's optimal to jump, okay? Um, anything you anticipate, you're gonna eliminate jumps because you you have a con concave utility function you're optimizing if you had a jump you could just kind of like interpolate it a little bit concavity jensen's equality whatever would give you a little bit of a boost probably a minor but still nonetheless a boost in in uh utility expected utility and so you keep doing that until you have this smooth uh smooth that um path okay so um yeah uh so that's that's the the productivity shock version. Okay, so now um, part part of the reason this is this one is tougher, and and it's not super. It doesn't give you that much other than you, you move from one steady state to the other. Is that both lines are shifting? Okay, and so there's there's a lot going on. Okay, it's actually a little bit easier if you do a setup where uh, like only one line is shifting. Okay, so. What should we do? So we can do taxes. I think probably taxes are the best one. Okay, so we're gonna do taxes. All right, and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a capital gains tax. Okay, so we, we just want something that affects um, the uh, Euler equation, but not the second equation, like the investment equation. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a capital gains tax, which is a real thing, um, and. We're gonna take that uh, proportional tax in essentially RA in uh, what your um, returns from renting out capital are. Okay, let's say let's say you're the consumer, you own the capital, and you rent it out to firms. Okay, there's no banks or whatever. We're cutting them out. Um, so you pay you pay taxes though on that RA that you get R times A. Okay, uh, but then what we're gonna do is turn around and rebate that lump sum to the commune or whoever uh, to people. Um, such that the the resource wise, it's a closed system still, right? We're not taking anything out or anything in and net. So so that investment equation actually is going to end up being the same. You can work out the math; everything cancels, and it's, you get the same thing. But there's still a price 
distortion, if you will. Uh, there, there's a change in the incentives for investment, okay? Uh, because you know that if you invest in capital in the future, you're you're going to get you know 10% less on those returns, and that that's going to affect how you make that investment choice, okay? So, yeah, I mean, don't take this too seriously because right in the real world, capital gains taxes go into the government, which might invest those in things which would affect your productivity. So this isn't really a statement about taxes per se. It's a statement about what are the pure price effects of, of taxes, okay, if, in this model, okay? Um, all right, so 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 I'm going to call this cap gains tax. All right, uh, tau. That's pretty standard. Use tau for tax. Um, okay, so then uh, what's going to happen? So I don't actually want to solve this, but should I? I don't know. I, I we can do we can we can do this. Maybe I'll Yu Chung actually go through and solve it. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the answer. Okay, and then we can go from there. All right. So yeah. So the it's in the notes too. I don't, but although I don't think I solve it there either. We'll we'll solve it at some point. But let's just say that that we have this change. Okay, we have taxes. Obviously, taxes are gonna affect your your incentives to invest. Okay, so what? Uh, let's just say that it looks like this. All right, you're gonna have. Remember C dot. Um, the 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 statement of that C dot equate the Euler equation. Okay, this is this is like a general statement of an Euler equation, independent of how the interest rate is determined. This is true from from your optimization problem. Okay. And um, what the the thing that I'm not gonna show you that that it that ends up kind of being true, is that. The interest rate you find is just you get you get like a tax term. So before the interest rate we found was just whatever was inside this right hand side parentheses. Okay. Now it's the same thing, but with that tax. Okay. So um, so now you know if, if the interest rate. If you think about it, you know it's your return on uh, running out capital instead of the marginal product minus depreciation. It's the same thing, but you lose you know say ten percent if tau is ten percent of that to, to taxes, okay, in terms of the incentive. So now you get it back later through the lump sum tax, but marginally, you know, the lump sum tax doesn't affect anything. Uh, and so this is still gonna show up in the margin. So, so you, see, you see how you can get it to like, the resources don't change because it's a closed system because you're rebating it, but because you're taxing proportionally and giving back unconditionally lump sum, you still get a, a price effect on the, on the interest rate, okay? So it's just it's just one of those tricks that people use in macro, all right? It it makes things simpler, okay? That's that that's why we do it, all right? So um, okay, so this so so this you know this is sort of I'm asserting this is part of the answer, okay? And so that's going to give you here, you know, if you plug it in up top, well, you know, just just for completeness, I'm going to write it out, okay? That's going to give you this, all right? So minus rho. So the what the one minus tau doesn't affect the rho, so that's not going to there. Okay, so it's going to give something like that. All right. Now the net change, though, in the Euler equation, is going to be the, is going to be a downward shift. Okay, just like before. All right. So if you know, um, let me think. Yeah. So uh, you know, the same logic holds if if this C dot equation were at a uh, steady state at zero. Okay, and then tau, and let's say tau is originally equal to zero. If tau is then something positive, that c dot's going to be negative. Okay, it's going to be pointing downwards. That's not the jump, but it's going to the arrow is going to be pointing downwards. Okay, um, and this also by the same logic as before. If you solve for you know steady state capital from this equation, right? Remember this this equation gives you k star. Okay, for when this equals zero, that earlier equation. If you solve for steady state capital, it's also going to be lower, okay? Which which isn't surprising. You're you're reducing the incentives for investment in capital. You're going to lead. That's going to lead to a lower uh, steady state capital level, okay? So again, it, it it basically what I've engineered here is is a shift downwards in the uh, the c dot um, equals zero line, which recall confusingly is what gives you k star, okay? But this. So yeah, equals zero line. We've engineered a shift downwards in that 
okay? But then because the resource constraint doesn't change, this thing is not gonna move. Okay, the red, so the green line's gonna move, but the red line is not going to move, okay? But um, yeah, so the, so the red line is, I mean, it's the same. Okay, so the, I'll just write it out. So the red line is the same as it was before. Okay, so basically all we have is this new term here, one minus top. All right, okay, so let's draw the new phase space graph, all right? Um, so the red line here, uh, there's only one of those. And then I'm gonna draw two green lines and that's gonna be shifting downwards. Okay, so then, you know, this, um, is K star, let's say one, so we don't get confused. K star one and K star two. All right, so that, that we have that shift, that reduction in the steady state level. That's a two, two, one. Okay, that reduction in steady state level of capital, these intersections here. So I mean, because because it comes from the Euler equation, we kind of know exactly right away what, what the capital levels are. And then we can plug that into uh, this equation here. People are calling me. I don't like it. Um, we can plug that into this equation here and get uh, the C equal, you know, for k to equals zero, I get C equals some function of k. All right, we can, not important what it is, but it's, it's gonna be lower, okay? Remember, we're always on the left side of the max of this function here. Okay, so that function is concave. Um, I, I showed that last time. I think it came down to the concavity of something uh, you can cat, you know, remember k dot equals zero line is c equals f of k minus delta plus n k. That's bad handwriting, but it, you know, c equals that, that function of k. That's the k dot equals zero on the, le the red line. You can calculate the max of that by taking a derivative of this, this thing here, right? Take a derivative of the whole, I mean, the whole, the whole equation, okay, c of k. Take a derivative of it, find where it's zero. That's going to be zero at f prime of k equals delta plus n, um, and but we know in the basic equilibrium that uh, f prime of uh, f prime of k is actually equal to delta plus rho, and the fact that n is less than rho gives you that you're on, that that's um, lower. Okay, so I, I I showed it last time uh, or like two classes ago. It, it just comes down to n being less than rho, which is our standard assumption and a concavity of f, you can show that you're always gonna be on this left-hand side, okay? And why is that important? Well, that means that if k star goes down, then c star also goes down, right? If you are on the right-hand side over here, if k star went down, it might actually be that c star goes up, okay? So that would be weird, okay? And actually, this is, is this your, this is your golden rule, I think. Yeah, this is, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so because this is this resource constraint is it's just a resource constraint. It's it's inherited from Solo, right? So, so yeah, that's that's the golden rule. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, yeah, and then, so it's sort of set, maybe maybe that's where I I can't remember. Anyway, but yeah, you, you can use the concavity and, and everything like that, and and so you're always on this side, and that so the comparative static is clear. Basically, you reduce capital, you reduce consumption. Okay. So that's that's good. Um, although with tau. That logic would change a little bit, maybe. Because the tau only is attached to the delta, but not the rho. I haven't worked it out. Maybe it's a fun little exercise for you guys. Um, I haven't worked that, that particular question out of, of, does the existence of the tau mean you might, you might be able to get over on this side? Then we're getting the like Laffer curve territory that's dangerous stuff. So um, I'm not sure, uh, but but you guys should check it out, all right? Maybe I'll have you chunk look into it in recitation or something like that, okay? So, um, but but if, you know, it, it's very possible though that, that that it's a clear effect and that the, you know, as long as tau is some number between zero and one, then then you still get the same thing or maybe even more so. Okay, but I'm not sure, ex ante. Um, all right, so, okay, so what's gonna happen? Uh, with this 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 uh, tax, it's a permanent, unanticipated tax change. Okay, so we were initially cruising along at k one star, 
all right? And then um, things changed. Okay, so so let me draw. Let me attempt to draw some stable arms. That's sort of like what I imagine a stable arm looking like. Actually, the um, the the picture in the notes, the the face face picture in the notes, uh, is actually computed from the model. Okay, so that's what a stable arm looks like. And in fact, that one is concave. Um, so I don't know, but I always like to imagine stable arms as having inflection points. So I'm going to do that. And I don't think it's ruled out. Um, okay, so and this let's say that this is our other oh dear something happened up there. So let's say that's a that's our other stable arm up there. Okay, um, like that. All right. So so you know these. Um, I mean, again, I haven't proven there's an ordering to the stable arm lines, but it would make sense if there was. It would be weird if the that. Left, left toward one kind of went really low and then went up. It, there's no particular reason for that, especially with the with the well-behaved production function like the Kyle Douglas one. So again, it's it's hard to rule out probably, but I, I think these are going to be fairly ordered. Okay, so um, all right. So what's going to happen uh, with this change? Okay, um, well uh, you're you're cruising along at K one star. All right, the change occurs. Okay, and you're going to jump up to that point uh, right there to the new stable arm that applies for the new dynamic excuse me um, to the new stable arm that applies for new dynamics you jump there that's your one jump and then everything after that is continuous just hopping on the old uh, what's the thing it's not an escalator people mover whatever it's kind of weird that there's not like a better name for those things but you're on that thing just you know at the airport and down on the steady state. All right, so um, yeah, now that's cool. I mean, and again, you see that you, you have the jump, you have the initial jump because you have new new information, new shit has come to light if you want the Lebowski reference. Um, and then after that, everything is continuous, smooth, all right, because of your concave utility, all right? Um, okay, that's, again, that's pretty similar to before. We, we managed to make it so that only one line moves, so that's good. Uh, but the, the, the real kicker though is if you do it's temporary or if it's it's pre-announced okay when th when that sort of stuff happens then then it gets real interesting okay so let me press the undo button like 12 times okay so that happened but then it unhappened all right um let, let's do the more interesting case because we, we basically just did that up top so let's do the more interesting case where it's it's pre-announced okay um okay this can get confusing uh so let's go through it one step at a time and, and i mean i'm primarily worried about me confusing myself but also by extension you guys all right but but if we go through one step at a time i think it'll it'll work okay so let, let's do the pre-announce what we're saying is in one year there's going to be a tax that's positive in the meantime currently there's no tax in the meantime there's no tax okay but New shit has still come to light, right? So we can jump, but we're going to jump right away. But then the dynamics will still be the old dynamics until the change occurs, right? So that but year, year zero to one, tax equals zero. The equations that we follow are, uh, you know, with the tax equals zero still. The arrows that we have are the tax equals zero. We still got to jump, but the arrows are tax equals zero. Then the, the tax equals one arrows kick in at year one. And then we can, we don't jump. We're, we don't want to jump at year one though, right? Because we we always try. If we can anticipate it, we would avoid a jump. We were told a year ago that there was going to be a tax change that happens. We're going to make it so that there's no jump. All right. So there's a old rules, new rules. We're following them, and we need to make sure that there's continuity. That's like a boundary condition that there's continuity when the transition occurs. Okay. Those are the rules. So it's like a constrained optimization. Okay. So then. Um, all right, so we know also that we're starting at K1 star, okay? Now, if we want to uh, if we want to have this continuity thing, basically we want to hit that new stable arm, okay? So, like so here's stable arm one, stable arm two, okay? We want to hit that new stable arm at T equals one year, okay? 
Um, and so what we're going to do, and the only thing we really choose then is what's our initial jump. Everything after that is sort of implied by constraints because we, we choose the initial jump. Uh, we follow the arrows for the old one for a year. And then uh, when they switch, we follow the arrows for the new one. And then we end up where we, we end up. Okay. And if we don't end up on the stable arm, if we don't end up on the second stable arm at t, at t equals one, then we're going to go off to some weird place. And we don't want to do that because of the instability. All right. So in fact, we must end up on the stable arm. Okay, so we need to choose C0 so we end up on the stable arm. Okay, so let's think about jumps. We're, we're moving, um, we're thinking, our, our basic choice is some point along this vertical green line. That's what we get to choose. All right, and everything after that is sort of, you know, implied by the equation, the, the flow equations. Okay, uh, let's try jumping downwards. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, maybe you have some intuition about what, where we would jump, but let's let's rule stuff out first. So let's jump down. I'm gonna jump way down here. Uh, so um, old equations still apply. All right. Um, that's like that's like the alternate version of old Lang syne. When old equations, okay. Um, so where are we gonna go? That's the let's label stuff. This is c dot equals zero. That's the c dot equals zero line. That's our Euler equation line, right? This is k dot equals zero. Okay, so we know that on that green line, c dot equals zero, and we're going to be moving right. Okay, I should draw the uh, I should draw the arrows. Okay, so remember, I'm going to try and draw them in a way that, that like applies for both, sort of. Okay. Uh, so the, the arrows are down here, we're moving up and right. Okay, that's like stable arm territory. Over here, we're moving down and left. It's again, sort of stable arm territory for either one. Okay, in between the green lines, there's different rules for different regimes, but on the far sides is where I'm gonna draw these things. Here, and then on these off diagonals, we're diverging. Okay, but you'll note that below the red line by construction, we're always moving right. Above the red line, we're always moving left. It's just vertical direction. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? That means if we jump down here, we're actually going to move right all the way out there. So that doesn't seem good. That doesn't even go close to where we want to go. All right. Okay, rule that out. Anything basically below jumping down, that's straight out. Okay. Um, okay, we can jump up. All right. I'm going to go to the extreme and jump up like a lot. Okay, again, we're, we're sort of ruling stuff out here. Okay, so now this one, it's the opposite. We're moving left. Okay, and we're gonna go off some like some direction like that. Again, not even close to where we want to end up. All right, so we can rule that out. So now maybe, as you might expect, okay, we're gonna go somewhere in between the initial steady state and where we would have jumped if it was uh, an immediate change, right? Okay, so so remember with the immediate change, we jumped straight up to the new stable arm. Boom, we're all good. Now we're gonna jump up a little bit but not too much, okay? And so I could draw stuff that didn't converge, but I'm just gonna draw the one that like, let's say will converge, which I'm just sort of like, I mean, I have complete control over it. So uh, you jump up a little bit, we're still moving left, but we're gonna move left such that in exactly one year's time, we end up hitting that stable arm, okay? So we, we jump, okay, so we jump, this is your jump, this is continuous, and then this is also continuous. Okay, so you jump at time zero. I guess I could zoom this in. Uh, you jump at time zero, okay? I could probably zoom in even more. Okay, can I? Nope. Nope, that's, I, there's a little dot there that's not, not relevant. Hey, you jump at time zero, okay? Uh, between time zero and time one is that little space where you're moving off of the green line, you know that you're going left and you're gonna hit the new stable arm at time t equals one, okay? And then after time c equals one is just a regular convergence, okay? So you choose, now, if if you were to choose, oops, um, if you were to choose one that's too high, right? Let's say up here, okay? You would move probably too far, you would end up Oh, you overshooting the stable arm, okay? And, and conversely, if you choose one that's too low, you would undershoot it, okay? So 
there is going to be a, basically you can kind of argue that there's going to be exactly one um, uh, distance to jump basically uh, that's going to give you that you exactly hit that new stable arm at time t equals one. Okay, so this is just like a intuitive sort of graphical argument. Okay, um, I mean you can this is though some you could also compute this right. I mean it's it's a it's a solution to an equation right. So if you, if you knew the new stable arm, let's say you computed the new stable arm, you you you, you choose c zero that jump at time t equals zero, uh, iterate forward the equations and, and look where you end up. And if you end up on that stable arm, then you've said it correctly, and you can just sort of keep adjusting until you you get that. Okay, so that's um, yeah, maybe we'll do that later. Okay, so that that's the argument. Okay, so you you, you can see that there there is a sort of informal algorithm for how you can figure this stuff out. Okay, so so what we've, I mean, I guess what you what we've learned from this though is that you can see that you're gonna want to jump up some amount, okay? And it's gonna be less than it if the thing had just been announced today, as happening today, right? You announce it and it happens today. Okay. And and so it if if you would if you announce it and it happens one second from now, you're probably gonna want to jump basically the same amount. Okay. And so you're gonna just a epsilon less, right? If you announce it, it's going to happen six trillion years from now. Well, you're probably going to not change that at all because you're not going to be alive in six trillion years, and I think the solar system is not going to exist either. So, um, you're not going to jump at all. Okay, so that you know, you if you ship that horizon out, it, there's a continuous transition between it just was announced today and it basically, for our purposes, was never announced. Okay, so or will never happen. Um, okay, so then. There's a continuity there, basically, and you can see how, how that, that jumping distance moves up and down uh, as you go from these one extreme to the other. Okay, so yeah, so that's that's how you can do it. Um, that That's the example of an uh, announcement that's delayed. Okay, the other interesting thing would be a temporary tax. Okay, so you say there's a tax today, it's implemented today, and it will expire in one year. Okay. So there, it's it's a little it's 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 a little bit the reverse. You you jump today because you have new information. You're following the new dynamics though for a year, and then you want to end up on the old uh, stable arm. Okay, so um, in, you know, I I forget exactly what's going to happen. So yeah, I mean you, you jump up, okay. I'm not going to draw it. You, you jump up, except now you're when you jump up to this new point. Okay, you're to the right of the green of the the applicable green line. Remember, with the new dynamics, the applicable applicable green line is the one on the left, and so that means if you jump up a little bit, you're going to be moving up and right, basically. So you're going to jump up and then somehow try and engineer it such that you end up on that new stable arm, and then transition back. Okay, so that's a little funny because you jump up. Go right, and then you go back and end up where you started, right? Because you're going to end up where you started. Yeah, it starts immediately, and it, yeah, it expires to one year. So your initial steady states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're, yeah, you, yeah, you start moving up. Let me think. Uh... Yeah. So your capital's going up. Let me think about this. So why is your, I'm trying to think, why is your capital going up? Oh, wait. Did I get this backwards? I might've gotten this backwards. No, because you're moving in. Um, let me think. Oh, maybe. Oh yeah, sorry. I was thinking that you're moving up and right in the top, top, top right hand quadrant. You're actually okay. You're moving down and left in the top right hand quadrant. So you wouldn't do that. Sorry, I got it backwards. Let's undo that and that. So I think what, it, what you'd actually do is.
Huh. Actually, okay. So this is this is actually yeah, this is tricky. But I think I think this is what would happen. Okay, if you jump up. Yeah, yeah. So you're still. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that sounds right. And so, well, if you think about it, I'm going to draw it graphically, and then we can see we can go back and see if that if that if that's correct. So, you're going to jump up, and now you're below you're you're below for this year the new dynamics reign. Okay, you're below that S two line. You're actually going to go down below say eight, undershoot it, and if you get it just right, do so you, you remember you have to pass that k k dot equals zero line vertically. And then you, you're actually going to end up down and then re-converge. So I, th I think, yeah, that, that yeah that seems consistent with what you said. So you're going to jump up initially, go down here, and then there's not much room here, but you're going to re-converge. Okay, so maybe this will help. All right, so you're going to jump up, curve around, pass through the k dot equals zero line, hit the new stable arm, and then converge back. Okay, so that one's that one's tricky. Okay, and, and you can see that your, uh, your consumption is going to go it's going to jump up and then it's going to go down below the original level and then it's going to reconverge back up. Okay, so, um, and then the capital, I guess, the if you think about just the horizontal direction, that's capital, you're going to deplete and then actually start to reaccumulate a little bit, which I guess is the anticipation of, of the reduction in the tax and then continue reaccumulating Converging state state. So, so, so the critical thing is you, you, your your transition point for when capital starts going up is actually a little bit before the expiration of the tax. Okay, so yeah, so things got kind of like crowded there around steady state. But you guys, you know, you can you can work through the logic, right? Of you know, what are the dynamics implied by the current sort of regime, policy regime? Uh, where am I going? When do I jump? Basically, when new information is is revealed. Okay, so so that those are sort of the the, the that's the way you can work through this sort of algorithmically. Okay. Um, all right. So I think those are the, yeah. I, I'll probably leave it at that in terms of these different policy experiments. Okay, but you can see that you can you can apply this to a wide variety of different situations. Okay, um, and and sometimes it'll give you a sort of qualitative idea of you know are we going to overshoot undershoot are we going to jump more or less relative to a, a baseline okay so you can you can kind of work through those all right okay so then where to from here uh i think so so now i i, I do want to talk about stability all right and I, I added a few slides to the notes okay i think might not have updated the PDF. I'll update the PDF, but I added a few slides to the to the HTML version of the notes. Okay, about about a little bit more intricate details on on stability. Okay, um, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about stability in a linear system, and then are, you know, sort of show that, that we can generalize that to stability and nonlinear systems so long as we're close in around that, that steady state, okay? So we can linearize it, okay? Um, okay. Uh, so I guess, I did I talk? I can't remember if I, um, if I went through there's any of the stability stuff in the linear setting. Do you guys? I don't I don't think I did. Probably not in any substantial sense. But yeah, I mean it, it yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It won't, it won't take too much time anyway. So, so, just to sort of, you know, de delineate the notation. Okay. So then, in in this kind of setup, all right, we're we're thinking about a system, uh, a multivariate system. Okay. 
univariate we already did, right? So now we're good. This is this is multivariate, all right? So uh, with some law of motion that's linear. Okay, so it's going to look like that. All right. So x x is a say a column vector uh, of whatever dimension. So that means that a is this is a square matrix um, of the same you know n by n, uh, and then b is is a column vector that offset. All right. So um, okay. So then anyway, what what can we say about this? Well, uh, you know, first of all, we we can think about steady state, right? Whereas Where's this whole uh, x out of t thing? Zero, okay. Um, and so, well, that's just going to mean that you know, ax of t is equal to minus b, okay. And then, uh, so we, we we can add and subtract stuff normally, but remember, you know, with uh, the matrices, right? We need to pre-multiply by a inverse. Uh, to really get the, get a proper solution, so so this is a this is a first of all this is a linear equality system. Okay, so in general, we can talk about solutions to this, and but we need for a to be uh, you know full rank and invertible. Okay, so let's assume that's the case, um, and so then we're gonna get you know uh, so this would be now x star. I guess at this point we can start calling this x star. The, the steady state should satisfy this equation, right? So x star is going to be uh, minus a inverse b. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, and actually, for any random a, it's not necessarily true that there's going to be a solution to that. But if we assume that a is full rank, then then we can do that. Okay. So, um, but you know, the the you know, going from here, we're we're pre multiplying by a inverse. So on the left hand side, a inverse a is equal to the identity, just one, one ish, uh, and then on the right hand side we get a inverse b. Okay, so, so this is going to be our steady state here. All right, um, we can compute that. Although, if you compute it, as people are very fond of reminding folks, is you should, you should, you should really compute it by telling whatever your program is to to solve this system rather than finding the inverse. We have like 2D systems, so really it doesn't matter for us. But you know, in general, if you have a huge matrix, it's actually there's ways to solve this more efficiently than computing the inverse of a and pre-multiplying. That's all I'll say about that. Um, there's about a hundred thousand stack overflow over post stack overflow posts talking about that. Okay, so um, all right, so that's our steady state. Okay, so we want to figure out what is actually happening around steady state in terms of the dynamics. Okay, which is to say is, is the stability properties. Okay, and so the way you can do this um, is is you can actually do like a little change of variables sort of thing. Okay, and this this is in the in the slides too. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna yeah I'm gonna do two change of variables. One one to correct for to think about differences from steady state, and then another one uh, to yeah, another one to kind of rotate things in the appropriate way, which doesn't make any sense right now to you probably, but you'll see why it's necessary in a moment. Okay, so but the first thing you would want to do is like, okay, well, let's let's do a change of variables uh, where we define um, x tilde is just being the the deviation from steady state. Okay, so that's a pretty common notion to think about. All right, so uh, if we want to do that, okay, well we can think about what is um, what you know? What is x tilde dot? Okay, we're really stacking things up here. What is x tilde dot? Okay, well that's going to be equal to uh, x dot. Okay, right? We're just doing a, a, an offset. Okay, so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, and then um, then the other thing is uh, what well, x dot is a x of t plus b. Okay. Now we don't. This, this is just like when we're trying to, to do a, the k normalization. We don't want an x there. We want an x tilde. Okay. So we're gonna sub in that x. Okay. So so this equation here, x. This means that x is equal to x tilde plus x star. Right. Plus b. Okay. 
So that's good. I mean, we have that in terms of uh, uh, just basically X tilde and some other constants. Okay, but also you know it, it actually is nice to to sub in so we can say okay this is a X tilde plus a X star plus B. Okay, but then that last term, this thing, well, AX star plus B is, is zero, in fact. I mean, if you look at up here, this equation, right, or if you just plug in for uh, X star, you know, you're gonna pre-multiply that A, get a B, which will cancel the plus B, right? So that whole second term there is actually just zero by the nature of it being steady state. So this, oh dear. Um, so, so what you're left with is, uh, AX tilde of T. Okay, so remember on the left hand side here we had X tilde dot. So X tilde dot is A times X tilde. It's just a, a we, we've basically, by doing this change of variables, we've removed that uh, inhomogeneity. Okay, so now when we look at deviation from steady state, B doesn't really matter. That's just an offset. All we care about is that A matrix and how it kind of how things respond to that. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we now have a homogeneous system. Okay, um, now the, the problem with the system still though is that uh, it's it's not separable, okay? You know, what, what happens with X1 influences how X2 moves and vice versa, and so things can get complicated, all right? Um, okay, so let's, we, we also wanna solve that issue. Okay, so remember, uh, x tilde dot is a x tilde, all right? So that's that's basically what we're left with, and uh, x tilde is x minus x star. And x star, maybe we'll need this, is a inverse b. Okay, so so that's, that's sort of where we're at. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do another cha uh, change of variables, okay? But first we need to think about a, all right? Everything basically comes down to a. This matrix will will completely determine the stability properties of the system. Okay. Now, this is where we need to start thinking about eigenvalue, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. Um, so remember, uh, eigen stuff. Did you, you guys did this in math math camp? Yeah. All right. Cool. So the with the this kind of thing, um, this eigenvector, right, is going to satisfy uh, this equation. Is it? Yeah, it's AB. Um, is it, is going to satisfy for for a given pair, right? They'll satisfy that equation. Okay, and here lambda is a, is a, a real number, v is a column vector, and a is the, is our a matrix. Okay, so that's the definition of like an eigenvalue vector pair being what they are, all right? Now, the other thing you can do, because, um, so this this is like, uh, we can say like sub i. There's, you know, there's potentially n of these pairs, right? For a, for a size n by n matrix, okay? Um, and, and so we can talk about those as, as uh, individual equations. You can also kind of stack these up, or not, or not up really, across, okay, you can stack these horizontally, okay? Because um, the the sort of output of each side of this equation is a column vector, right? So these are really only, in terms of the output, column vector equations. So if we stack all of those horizontally, we'll get matrix equations, okay? Where, each, where the value of each side will be a matrix, okay? Um, and that's actually convenient for a couple of reasons, all right? Um, so if we do that, let me check my notes here to make sure that I'm doing this right. Yeah, so if we do that, it turns out what you get is on the left-hand side, you're going to get A times V. This is something you maybe you want to like work out on your But if you have A times VI and you have N different VIs and you stack everything horizontally, it turns out you just get A times V where V is like uh, if you just stack all of those um, eigenvector column vectors, if you stack those horizontally into one big matrix, okay? So that's our V is, is a matrix of all the eigenvectors 
uh, column vector is stacked horizontally. Okay, and it turns out that just if you if you just kind of work through you know, how do you do matrix multiplication, you just get that when you stack these equations, you also get AV. All right. Now on the left hand side, that takes some doing, but it turns out that when you stack all of these, you can define a lambda matrix, which is uh, diagonal and just has all of these um, uh, eigenvalues on the diagonal and there's sort of generalized zeros off the diagonals, okay? And you're gonna get this. Now, why do they switch order? They just kind of do. Um, it's because we decided that, that eigenvectors were column vectors and stacked horizontally. It turns out that the lambda thing goes on the right rather than the left. I don't know. I mean, this lambda could have been on the right because it's a scalar anyway. So it just, yeah. Uh, when you multiply by a diagonal matrix, if you multiply on the left, it multiplies all the rows. If you multiply it on the right, it multiplies all the columns. It's just how it works. Um, so at the end of the day, you're going to get this. Okay, so yeah. Partially, you just have to trust me, okay? Because this, for me, at least, is confusing to do this kind of um, matrix algebra. Um, okay, now, suppose that th things are well-behaved, A's full rank, it's got n, you know, linearly independent eigenvalues, therefore V is full rank, okay? In that case, then we can also multiply that V over to the other side, and get that, all right? Okay, so that's cool because that's actually a matrix decomposition, right? We've said, okay, for a given matrix A that's sort of well-behaved, we can decompose it into these matrices that are constructed using the eigenvectors and the, uh, the eigenvalue on the diagonals, okay? Um, excellent. Okay, so then, uh, cool. All right, so, so this is just, this is like an aside in some sense, okay? But we're going to use it now. All right, so, so we have that, we have this matrix decomposition. And so V, it seems like V is sort of related uh, to A. So let's um, do our second substitution based on that. Okay, and I'm, I'm running out of time here, but I think I can finish this at least. Let's do a second substitution. We're gonna define X hat, which is sort of that X tilde, that deviation from steady state, but with a, another V inverse on the front. Okay, and why V inverse? It's just, you'll see that it works, okay? But it's basically kind of rotating things from a place where they were, um, you know, sort of all co-determined into a diagonal space, okay? And I'll show you that. All right, so so what does this mean? Uh, okay, so X tilde hat. Uh, let me think here. is gonna be V inverse, sorry, X, X hat dot, the derivative of X hat, okay? It's gonna be V inverse times the derivative of X tilde. Again, it's just a linear, V is, is constant in time, okay? So this is it's gonna annoy me, so I'm just gonna redraw that X hat dot. Okay, so, uh, and now we know that X tilde dot, remember what we found is, is A times uh, X tilde. Okay. Now, again, here from this one, um, in, you know, we can do another pre multiply off of that to find V inverse A being equal to lambda V inverse. Okay. And apply that here. So we're going to get lambda V inverse. X tilde, okay, which is equal to, at the end of the day, lambda X hat. Remember, th this thing here is just X hat, right? So to summarize, on the far left, we had X hat dot, and that's equal to lambda X, okay? We just had to kind of use this matrix decomposition. So it's important that I chose specifically V inverse as our pre-multiplier, because if you chose V, it wouldn't work. You need to choose V inverse. It's just like, I, I, you know, I knew that would work, and so I did that, and it turns out we do the sort of guess and check. It does work, right? So now you get uh, in this, sorry, hat. 
in this space, x hat dot is equal to lambda x hat. Okay, so that's cool. That's just another matrix, but it's a diagonal matrix, right? So that means this is a separable system. Okay, so that means that x hat dot i is equal to lambda i, sorry, is equal to lambda i x hat i of t, right? For all i. This is a separable system. We can talk, we can find the path of x1 independent of x1 hat independent of all the other x hat i's. So we can, we can do everything independently. Okay, so what we did was we kind of, if you think about around steady state, we have some sort of like, it's not, you know, not separable system. We rotated it so that everything is just sort of like separable. Okay, so that's what the v is basically doing. And you just have to make sure you choose the right v. Okay, it turns out it comes from the eigenvectors. Okay, um, all right, so I'm, I'm over time, but let me just say the punchline here is, the, the, and then here you can see the stability comes down to the sign of these eigenvalues. If the eigenvalue is positive, things are gonna diverge. If the eigenvalue is negative, they're gonna converge exponentially, right? So these, these are exponentials now because of this, this linear differential equation here. Uh, it's either going to converge exponentially or, or diverge, okay? Um, like ignore zero for a moment, okay? So, so that's why the, the stability comes down to positive or negative. In the Ramsey case, we're going to have one positive and one negative eigenvalue, so it's sort of that saddle kind of situation. And the last thing I'll say is, okay, so, so what does that mean? Well, that means that if the eigenvalue is positive, you have to choose... If, if lambda i is positive, you have to choose x hat i of 0 equals 0. Okay. So that you start at 0, and so you don't have to worry about those instabilities. Okay. And so that means that um, uh, you can you have to choose one of them to be 0, and the other to be can be anything. Okay. And that means that this, this, this stable... Um, the space of stable sort of initial conditions is going to be one dimensional, which is to say a line. Okay, so that's sort of the punch. Okay, so the, 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 that one's harder to see sometimes. Okay, so we'll, we'll jump back into it next time and see what, why exactly that is. But essentially, what it, what's important is you, you can turn this into a separable system and that the signs of the eigenvalues are going to be important. And that's going to tell you kind of about the stable manifold around your, your steady state. Okay, so we'll. we'll We'll, we'll talk more about this next time, though. All right? Okay. Um, so I'll see you next week. Uh, check out that homework. And we got Yu Chung on Friday. So maybe he'll, he'll go over some of this, too. All right? Office hours tonight. I keep forgetting. Yeah. Uh, 8 p.m. I have an alarm on my phone, so now I, I, it's impossible for me to get. But, yes, office hours tonight if you want to swing by, too. I'll be there. All right.